You're coming too. What started as a dream is now our reality. Seven years ago, we poured her ballast, raised every frame, cut every plank, and named her Red Aviva. Ready for life back on the ocean, this year we're determined yeah. to set sail. Would you look at that. I'd say that's the making of a fine cruising vessel. <laughs> We're salt and tar, and this is our life. We're happy to share, and thanks for joining us. So last year on our haul out, we were a little concerned that we had an issue with um, like our electrical system on the boat being grounded onto the prop because uh, the nut that we had put on our prop shaft was like almost completely eaten away from electrolysis and the zinc was gone. When we launched the time before that, I had actually lost the like the proper bronze nut that I had for the prop shaft. So I I just kind of grabbed a random one, knowing that we wouldn't be in the water that long. It was in with my other, you know, boat hardware parts that I've had for a long time. So I assumed that it was just, you know, a 316 stainless nut, but wasn't really sure. So uh, my other hypothesis was that the nut was just really, really crappy, low grade steel. And um, since it's attached to a Manel shaft and up against a bronze prop, uh, obviously those two metals will uh, consume like a really low quality steel like that really fast. And um, so it looks like that was the case because last year I replaced that nut with another with a good proper bronze one and it's totally fine. We still got zinc left and looks like that was the issue. So that's good. There's the zinc, what's left of the one I put on last year. So got a new one, so I'll replace that real quick. And then I'll clean up the prop, put some more marine underwater grease on the prop. That's what I do. It's a lot of people have different methods and a lot of people swear by different things. There's some really expensive prop coats that you know, may or may not work. But for me, I don't do anything too crazy since we haul the boat out every year. And I don't really see the point of taking a huge amount of time or spending a lot of money on one of the other methods that people swear by. So I just clean it up and use underwater grease and that seems to work fine for the year. Honestly, like, I'm so surprised at how good a condition these little Zerk fittings are still in. <laughs> They're like perfect. They're like the day they went in. Awesome. All right, I'm done with sheathing rim. Sweet. So now I'm gonna fix that, which Garrett blamed on Jim. <laughs> only because he was the one that only one that wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> We all know that it was me. Fault always automatically goes to the one person that's not there anymore. <laughs> or most of the time, swap. Well, yeah, if, if we're the only two working, then it's swap's fault. <laughs> swap's been hanging out with my parents because when they're home during the weekend, my dad usually does yard work and Swab loves being outside with my dad. So, but today he decided to come hang out with us, which is really nice. <laughs> 
<laughs> little half sun, half shade, yeah. <laughs> That's typical swamp. We always set up a space for him in the shade and he will choose to like sprawl out in the direct sunlight. <laughs> Just like, and roast, plop in the shade for a little bit and then cool down and then he'll come and just roast back out in the sun. He just like alternates. Yeah. <laughs> thought about so many ideas for getting the name on the boat and uh, I think my conclusion at this day, this time, this very moment is going to be just put it on the starboard half of the transom because we'll most likely repaint again in a year and we might actually do some uh, covering boards or name boards maybe up towards the bow and then secure them to the bulwarks at a later date. So. This is just rendition number one. Let's just get the name on the boat. Hey, you want to tell everyone what you're doing? Uh, I did film a little clip, but um, yeah, I think I've thought about this for many years, <laughs> getting, the, getting the official name on the boat, their hailing port, but now that we're actually going to be leaving the dock here soon, it's legally required <laughs> that we have the name on the boat. And we've been doing such an awesome job this haul out that There's so your like, canvas. Yeah. <laughs> you can't really see all that I did, but just kind of getting some ideas. Just some guidelines. Hmm. I think gonna be a little smaller. It's 350. Store closes at four. Oh, gotta go. I'm gonna have to go get more beer before I can. Alright. Or else get very dangerous very quick. <laughs> oh no! holds deep meaning to us. It's Latin for rebirth or revival, and building this boat has been just that. A process of growth and change that pulled us apart and put us back together. Her hailing port is Morro Bay. Although she's never been there, yet, it's always been our shared home port. Once loaded on the truck, we could get under the keel and under the boat stands, since bottom paint dries nice and quick. There she moves again!
good. All good. They're launching a lot of boats today, pulling and plopping back in. So we are uh, moving quick this morning, which is nice. We're first in. And now the motor's on, got our fenders on. Time to go back to our slip. Looking good. Another haul out down. Yep. That's the engine cover behind me. There's the Wester Leaky. And Garrett's checking the oil. Here we go again. <laughs> I kind of talked about this on camera before, um, but it's probably pretty depressing to watch, so. <laughs> mm. <sighs> I was going to install one of our uh, smaller bilge pumps, so I opened all the floorboards up and was getting that, and I was figuring out where I was gonna route the hose, so um, I was gonna route it underneath the engine, and I saw that there was like two, at least two quarts of oil below the motor um, after we had just run it on the river for the longest we'd run it, um, and I topped everything off right before we went. So obviously that's, that's not okay. It's <laughs> a lot of oil escaping. I think the leak is significant enough that we can probably run the motor and just look at it. And we'll probably see where it's leaking from. All right. We've come this far. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well just keep going. Run the motor and stare at it. And hopefully the obvious issue will be leaking. All right, I'm gonna start the motor, so just don't put your fingers in anything that moves. <laughs> okay. This is why <laughs> it's really helpful to have a small first mate. <laughs> how the hell did you get in there? I don't know how I'm gonna get out. That's 
kind of what I'm wondering. How did your how do you fit your ass in there? That's the real question. You can back it up to the hall. <laughs> I mean, everything about you is pretty petite except for that booty. <laughs> I had to back it up because it goes up against the framing. <laughs> there we go. Wow. Well, That's yeah. A bummer. Joking aside, <laughs> we're having a good time. <laughs> What else can you do? Well, we've come to the, I would say 100% conclusion that we cannot leave without pulling the motor. I, I gotta think about things more, but I feel like it's at the stage where it has to come out and come out. Out. out, out, go in a garage and do a full breakdown. Yeah, we're kind of beyond the point of, I mean, we've done all of the little things. And now if we were to lift it up, then we might as well do everything else possible. Like really complete the complete rebuild. Mm-hmm. So... And we're what, three quarters rebuilt already? <laughs> We've done quite a bit so far. And it sucks because like, it's a hard thing to figure out what what the right thing to do is and to make sure you, you do the right thing and you do enough because the engine runs beautifully. It runs perfect. It always starts right up. It never, it's never had a single hiccup. It's got plenty of power, you know, but still at this point, like we can't leave with it right now, obviously, because we were out for three, three hours, maybe four hours, I don't know, max. And we dumped probably half, at least half of our oil capacity. Um, well, and just looking down there, it didn't take very long for it to start dripping. And then, I don't know what, we were running it just 15 minutes, and then it was pretty much constant. Yeah, we weren't even up to to operating temperature yet. But even with the oil warming up that slight bit, and as the oil warms up, the viscosity changes, it gets thinner. Um, and I think if the engine had gotten up to full temperature, it would have been a solid been a stream. stream. Yeah. It was like hardly had a break in this in the dripping. Well, without uh, exhausting all of you guys at home <laughs> with our talking back and forth, because we got <laughs> some things to talk about, discuss, well, and hmm. yeah, I mean, regardless, this is a, a big decision. This is a huge thing because this is this is like a make or break leaving this season. We're gonna have to figure out for us what that means and then so we can fill you guys in on what that means. You know, I think maybe what I filmed the other, the other day when I first found that, I think I touched on that subject a little bit because, you know, it was a fresh kind of oh shit moment in my mind. We've been doing this every day. Like even the days we're not physically working on the boat, our minds are still boiling with the projects and what we have to do and all the logistics and everything. It's been every single day constant for seven straight years. And it's kicked our ass and we've hit burnout point. It feels like multiple times and like what we've talked about just the two of us before, I think like regardless, like we have to go, we have to go this season. We have to go do at least something yeah. and if circumstances prevent us from leaving this season on Red Aviva like we at least have to go do something and get away for a little while and if that means like you know spending spending the summer or spending the rest of the spring and summer just 
Doing something. Doing something else. Taking a real Some sort long of vacation, break. some sort of breather. Like, just get away for a few months. Like, I think it's, it, it is, the only options are that or figure out a way to get this done and still go this season. But I don't think it's an option for us to just push solidly through another year and postpone leaving until yet another season. No, nobody wants that. Because, because we'll be very grumpy people. <laughs> yeah. Er, yeah. pretty fighting the severe case of the grumpies and burnout and yeah. hate. <laughs> yeah. For, you know, we get these little glimpses of awesomeness, but yeah, the last two years for sure, it's just feels like the project's really drug out. Yeah, because I mean, by no means do I think this is like a whole year's worth of work, but you know, obviously when you're sailing and you want to go cruising, you kind of have to think in terms of seasons, like yeah. how long will it take and how, how much time, money, um, and just logistics will go into doing this and translating to time. Will that mean that we will miss the season? Cause I mean, if we can't get out and start sea trialing the boat by like late summer, yeah, then realistically hopping down the coast and everything and getting the right weather, so. Well, and it so easily passes you by. Like last year, we really thought that we'd be able to do one final really big push and leave the dock in August. Like mm -hmm. it seemed really realistic. Even two months prior to that was like, all right, I think we can do this. And then something set you back and then two months past August, then we're past, we're past the season to leave. Yeah. I mean, we could be in the bay and winter out someplace else, which was our other thoughts, but then we decided to stay and get more work done. And and that's when we've started discovering all this stuff because we started doing more river trials and yeah. So I guess that's what we'll have to figure out. So we had a little pity party yesterday over some margaritas <laughs> and we talked a lot and then we also called Christian and he gave us sort of a direction mm -hmm. to go today instead of jumping right to lifting the motor up and then deciding where to go from there. <laughs> Wallowing in our own self pity. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we're gonna start with, because it's so much of a leak, like it was almost a steady stream, we're gonna take off the whole housing of the oil filter. Mm -hmm. That whole attachment has like two plates, and then we're gonna re clean, reseal all of that, and then test the motor again. Probably and try to retorque all the oil pan bolts, because Christian brought up a good point that um, because of how much it's leaking that it's quite likely that it it's not coming from the oil pan gasket that it's coming from that that uh, like the housing that holds the oil filter in because that is under pressure like the full pressure whereas the uh, the oil pan itself is not so we'd be more likely to see the weeping that we can see in a few of the other places around the oil pan but not dripping to yeah, just it's, it's just, being pushed out yeah it's obviously being pushed out yeah. quite significantly tomorrow's the last day of april and we did not expect to see may still here at the slip so we're trying to make the best of it and you know i yep. think it's just healthier to throw out dates altogether. there is no date it's just we leave when we leave as soon as we can leave. <laughs> well, we also didn't expect to rebuild our transmission and then we didn't expect to potentially have to pull our motor out. So. Yeah, the, the <laughs> engine unfortunately as much as we said it's not gonna stop us. We're, we're not stopping yeah. <laughs> but we're we got to deal with some more stuff so. Yeah, well it's just that what it is. That decision of 
Like, yes, we, we physically can go without the motor, but we can also do the work, get it going, and if we just do it, it shouldn't take that long and our lives will be so much easier. So up next, the inner bracket that attaches to like the side of the oil pan there, where the oil filter attaches to this guy. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. There's the oil filter connects into this guy, which then has a gasket between it and connects to the bracket here. It's also attached to the engine mount. And that's what you can see part of it. It's kind of like an L. Then a light shone down from the heavens through our butterfly hatch. To make the repair, we had to lift the motor up. Score for the butterfly hatch. Success. Yay. It's difficult to show the bad times, but we live every up and down. Trick is to not stay in the darkness. Thanks for being a part of this journey with us, and we'll see you next week. Touch up that paint. Touch up that part. <laughs> <laughs> it's more for my enjoyment when I'm editing. I can then like re-listen to the banter. But this guy's no. full of shit. <laughs> what we'll probably end up doing is putting like 20 gallons of gasoline down below and um, shooting the boat with uh, flare guns. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. All right, burn it down. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah,